Hi there. My name is Sergio Agostinho, and I'm from the Institute for Systems and Robotics at the Instituto Superior Técnico in Lisbon. And I'm here to talk about my latest work titled Just a Spoonful of Refinements Helps the Registration Error Go Down. This work was done in collaboration with Alessio Del Bue from the Pattern Analysis and Computer Vision Group at the Instituto Italiano di Tecnologia, as well as Aliosha Oshep and Laura Leal Taiche from the Dynamic Vision and Learning Group at the Technical University of Munich. Point cloud registration can be defined as the task of finding the transformation that meaningfully aligns two point clouds. This task is particularly relevant for 3D reconstruction, supporting applications like inspection and maintenance, as well as in autonomous driving as an intermediate step to achieve ego motion prediction. There are multiple ways of tackling point cloud registration in the deep learning setting. But today we will focus on the arguably most popular and successful one, correspondence-based methods. A traditional correspondence-based pipeline follows a similar structure to what is depicted in this diagram. First, both point clouds are supplied as input to a feature encoder. The same encoder will produce a feature for every point in each point cloud. Then comes the matching stage that takes place in feature space. Matches are usually found through simple heuristics like nearest neighbor search or through complex approaches with foundations in optimal transport theory. This step establishes point correspondences between both point clouds. Finally, now equipped with a set of correspondences, the post can be extracted in closed form by finding the optimal transformation that minimizes the distance between correspondence pairs. In particular, the rotation part is conventionally estimated through a method known as CAPS or in some circles referred to as orthogonal procrustes. Having introduced the general design of correspondence-based methods, it is important to address how these are usually supervised in the deep learning domain. Because better matching quality directly translates into better poses, the most conventional form of supervision is done at the matching level. This usually manifests itself in two ways. Either by applying conventional contrastive learning techniques, where feature encoders are encouraged to pull positive matches closer together in feature space while simultaneously pushing negative matches further apart, or alternatively, through correspondence rejection schemes, where given a set of putative correspondences, a classifier is responsible for finding a reliable inlier subset for the follow-up pose estimation phase. However, in the past couple of years, we witnessed a new trend focusing on applying supervision at pose level since the final pose is what matters most in the point cloud registration setting. As previously mentioned, in the final layer, responsible for estimating pose, CAPTCH makes use of singular value decomposition to estimate rotation. It is our belief that this new trend of pose supervision was fueled by the progressive addition of differentiable versions of the singular value decomposition operation to the most popular deep learning frameworks. This, in turn, finally enabled backpropagation through the pose solver. Our work targets correspondence-based methods that focus on direct pose supervision. We propose a new differentiable and parameter-free layer to be added in front of a correspondence-based registration host network. Our layer is only added during training. This layer works in an iterative fashion, producing a new pose per iteration, these additional new poses will augment the conventional pose supervision with extra terms. This process produces different gradients compared to the baseline host network that are beneficial to the matching stage, implicitly helping it to produce better matches. So what does our method actually do? By solving a different optimization problem, our method takes an estimate produced by CAPTCH and it performs a number of recurrent iterative steps to update this estimate. In many cases, our layer will not modify the estimate coming from CAPTCH throughout its iterative procedure. However, in certain cases, the estimates produced by our layer will progressively diverge from the original one with each iteration. This divergence is paired with a higher penalty in the loss used to supervise training, conditioning the network to avoid the set of matches it provided. This ends up being beneficial to the training of the host network, encouraging it to learn better correspondences. And as we already established, better correspondences yield better poses. It is important to stress, though, that our layer does not produce pose estimates that are more correct than CAPTCH. Its value comes exactly from the opposite, 
producing worse poses in certain situations. Our layer is added as a complementary step to correspondence-based registration deep learning networks. At each iteration, it takes as input an initial rotation estimate, for instance the one supplied by CAPS, a set of point correspondences estimated through a trainable matching network, and optionally, a set of weights ranking the quality of these correspondences. The method itself can be split into three stages. In the first stage, we solve an optimization problem that is similar to CAPS, also minimizing the distance between correspondence pairs, but this time with linearized constraints. This will produce a solution that is not guaranteed to be a rotation matrix. In the second stage, we convert the solution from the previous stage into a valid rotation matrix through a process akin to Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. In the third and final stage, we employ our new rotation estimate to find the optimal translation. Let us look in more detail into each stage. In stage one of our method, we solve a constraint optimization problem that is slightly different from CAPS. What CAPS does is to find the optimal rotation that minimizes the distance between the set of points in the source and target point clouds. Note that these points have already their mean subtracted. Because it is a rotation, the solution needs to reside inside the special orthogonal group of dimension 3. The membership in SO3 is defined by the following equalities. The first equality constraint enforces the solution to be orthogonal, while the second one restricts its determinant to be equal to 1. Instead of employing these quadratic and cubic constraints, we linearize them by taking instead their first order Taylor expansion around the previously supplied rotation, for instance, the one supplied by the host network. However, after linearization, the determinant constraint is no longer linearly independent with respect to the orthogonality constraints, and is therefore redundant. After employing the method of Lagrange multipliers to our optimization problem, we end up with a linear system of equations that has a closed form solution. In this equation, the variable r represents a column-wise vectorized version of the rotation matrix and lambda the vector of Lagrange multipliers coming from the orthogonality constraints. Due to the linearization of the original rotation constraints, there is no guarantee that our solution from stage 1 is a valid rotation matrix. To overcome this problem in a backpropagation-friendly way, we adopt a strategy proposed by Zhou et al. that has close ties with Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. Specifically, the first two columns undergo Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization, while the third column is built from the cross-product of the first two, ensuring orthogonality and a correct determinant. One might ask, why not simply project the solution from stage 1 with singular value decomposition? To answer that, consider the following equations. In here, matrix X is factorized through singular value decomposition into matrices U, sigma, and V transposed. The differential of matrix V is dependent on matrix K. In turn, matrix K is dependent on the singular values of the input matrix X. If any of the singular values are similar, matrix K is not properly defined because the denominator of some of its off-diagonal elements is zero. This in turn means that the gradient through the SVD operation is also not properly defined. Now consider that the singular values of a rotation matrix are all equal to one. So if stage one of our method produced the proper rotation, we simply would not be able to backpropagate through it. In our third and final stage, we estimate the translation. Once the rotation is known, the translation can be extracted in closed form by computing the average of the points in the source and target point clouds. With newly produced poses at every iteration, we need to incorporate them into the loss. As an example, we present up top how deep closest point supervises its training. After adding our layer, we integrate the new poses by averaging the contribution of each, as supported by our ablation studies. We validated our discoveries with two correspondence-based point cloud registration networks that focus on post supervision, namely Deep Closest Point and RPMNet. We followed closely DCP and RPMNet's original experimental setup, so most of our experiments were conducted on ModelNet 40, an object-centric dataset consisting of CAD models containing several symmetrical objects. Here we show some quantitative results for Deep Closest Point in its test with unseen object categories. In this experiment, one half of the dataset's object categories are used for training while the other half is used for evaluation, testing the network's capacity for generalization. 
Objects are rotated anywhere between 0 to 45 degrees with translation in the range of minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 along each axis. For this in all subsequent experiments, we use five iterations of our method as supported by our ablation studies. We report an isotropic rotation error and translation error where lower numbers are better. Please refer to the main paper for an extended definition of these metrics. We can see from the table that we meaningfully improved the rotation error by one degree, reducing it to two-thirds of its original value, with also small improvements in the translation component. For RPM Net, we report an experiment where there is only a 70% partial overlap between point clouds, in conjunction with independent Gaussian noise that is added to each point cloud. We now also report isotropic rotation and translation errors, as well as chamfer distance. RPM Net is a strong baseline in this scenario. Nevertheless, we managed to improve it further, especially once we removed the inlier encouraging loss term that was originally proposed by its authors. To extend our conclusions to real data, we also report results on 3D Match, a dataset composed of RGBD scans of indoor scenes. For Deep Closest Point, this is a particularly challenging scenario, because it breaks its assumption that every point has a correspondence. We took point clouds of scene fragments with a minimum guaranteed surface overlap of 30%, and apply the remnant transformation within the usual parameters. Once more, we can observe the same beneficial effect from including our layer in this slightly different data modality. To conclude, we introduce a new parameter-free layer targeting correspondence-based registration networks. Our layer implicitly improves matching quality only through post-supervision. Finally, we would also like to invite our viewers to also check our supplementary material, where we show that our layer is a guilt-free add-on. In its worst case scenario, its improvements are negligible, but the registration performance is not hindered. Thank you for watching.